threw one high. He won that game off a wild bitch. Seven nothing in the third, and there I go. trap to me and I was like oh boy coming out of high school man a lot of dudes don't understand like how tough it really is mm. I'll take my odds at any mm. day of the week say that again I'll take my odds any <laughs> Come day on of the now. week Fact. talk your shit hey, bro and you ain't, you ain't see your boy I saw it I, the first thing I did when I walked in I saw that but take your glasses off bro both can't have glasses on Y'all the originals. Y'all can both have. You wear your glasses for because your birthday. But it's season two. But my birthday is tomorrow, mm. so I get to wear my glasses. And I can't wear it during the Candace episode because you know it's, it's Candace. That's you know yeah. what? I'll let you have it. Come it on. is your birthday. Yeah, it is your on, birthday. I'll let you. Out. Come on. I'll let you. I appreciate I'll let you rock that. Yeah. And with that, we back with the Two Percent Podcast. You thought we wanted rolling? Yeah, all right. So here we go. We got uh, two special people today. You know, I'm gonna introduce our, our guest host first. Guest you know, host, a classmate of ours. You know, he started off on the as a basketball manager at Vanderbilt, and then became an actual player on the team his senior mm-hmm. season. My man John Coretta right here. What's yeah, up, John? Johnny J. Hey, you know, I'm happy to be here, man. Man, give us a little bit about what you're doing right now. Just like one minute. Yeah, so right now I work out in Detroit uh, with the Detroit Pistons, uh, mainly with their minor league team, G League team, uh, the Motor City Crews. Um, so I'm a player development coach out there, uh, assistant coach. And now nah, it was a lot of fun. Last year was my first year with that. This is my third year with the Pistons. Uh, I was an intern that started off in the front office of ba- uh, basketball ops, moved down to the video room. Now I'm a coach, so it's uh, been a quick ride, but a fun ride too. They've allowed me to grow a little bit, so I've definitely been blessed out there. So it's been fun. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, so you guys see, we, we're gonna switch up a little bit this season. You know, Roe has got a, a coaching job with the Vanderbilt Commodores, you know, yes, so he's on stage right now. Roski. So John's gonna be filling in for our basketball portion. And with that, I guess for this uh mm-hmm. for this evening, we got a first round draft pick, 2020, Ooh. to the Boston Celtics. Yes, sir. 14th overall. Okay. Damn. That's crazy. That's wild. <laughs> okay, that's crazy. That's we got wild. Aaron Neesmith, man. What's up, dog? Yes, sir. What's up, y'all, man? Appreciate y'all. Ooh, my fault, my fault. <laughs> 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 Appreciate you guys having me, bro. Uh, it's good yeah. to be here. You know, I've seen some of y'all stuff before. Um, yeah. So when John texted me and presented me with an opportunity to come on y'all's podcast, you know, I was all for it. Bet, man. Appreciate that. We're going to get right for into real. it, man. So first, I man, why why Vanderbilt? Out of all the schools you could have gone to, why Vanderbilt? Because, you know, it's uh, not too many. You know, it's not known as like a powerhouse of basketball. Yeah, like, for sure. So why? Uh, I get this question a lot. So it's really like it was the best of both worlds. And I'm mm-hmm. sure y'all felt the same way, you know, when you came to play here, having your choice and options of where to go. Um, I could have went, you know, somewhere that was more basketball oriented mm-hmm. and yeah. not on the academic side. But my brother, uh, my brother went to Harvard. So oh, my, my family's always been like education, like yeah. pressed. So uh, in order to keep up with him, I wanted to keep education on the forefront. So I looked at some Ivy Leagues like Harvard, Yale, Mm -hmm. were on my my final list. Um, And then Vanderbilt came along and it was the SEC. I had SEC schools already, but it wasn't academics that weren't where I wanted them to be. Mm -hmm. So when Vandy came, it was kind of just, you know, best of both worlds. Yeah. Did any, um, was there any influence on like that class that you you was in? Because that was a... Probably the most highly rated class. The, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, the yeah. most highly rated class real. to come to Vanderbilt yeah. ever. Yeah, yeah. we were. We were really the highest ranking class to come to Vandy in like 80 years. Um, <laughs> so when I, I was the first to commit too, so I committed somewhere early, like right after our final AAU season. Mm-hmm. And then I think Darius committed right after I did, Darius Garland. Um, and then when he committed, I was like, ooh. Mm. Mm, it's different. Yeah, I said, well, we might, <laughs> we might do something. Yeah, yeah. Do it. And then uh, yeah. Semi committed right after mm-hmm. Darius. And that's when I was like, oh, like, we got a real got a chance. chance. Yeah. Um, and then on my visit, we had another dude come. Um, I don't know if you know the name, Romeo Langford. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He ended up being my teammate in Boston. So he visited when I came that's to visit right. as well. So it could have been all four of us. Dang. So. And actually, Correct me if I'm wrong, but when you committed, you were the highest. Uh, you were yeah. what is it? Like, I was the highest. The highest yeah, that we I ever was had. the highest ranked recruit 
Vandy had ever, mm-hmm. or maybe in the past, like past. Yeah, I think it was decades. ever because uh, I don't think we'd had a four star before, and yeah. you were the first. Yeah, it was something up there. But then Derek committed like three weeks after me, and you know, <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, that was short lived. Had it for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, what was that that draft process like? You know. Um, Actually, before we even get yeah, to that, I was about to say, yeah, before we get to the draft like, process, man. how what like what was your journey? I guess because like the two percent, it talks about like your journey to get to college athletics. So yeah. for you, what was it like growing up in like amateur basketball? How was that journey for for you to get to Vanderbilt and then so far? Yeah, uh, so I actually wanted to be a football player growing up because my dad played football, mm-hmm. um, and I played that as long as I could up until I got to like seventh, eighth grade. And I, I grew up in Charleston, South Carolina. It's like super hot down there. It gets like 100 degrees. So I put them pads on one day. Mm. And man, I had like a heat stroke. I passed out. <laughs> and I remember I was laying down on the training table and I was looking at the scene. I was like, yeah, I'm done. Is it? <laughs> Is it? I'm done. I'm not playing yeah. again. So I started focusing on basketball then. Um, took it real seriously. I was never like, I'm a big hard work guy because I don't mm-hmm. think I've ever been, you know, the most talented guy on any team I played on. Yeah. I always feel like I can. I work them though, and that's what you know. I stand on every day. Got you. So like, I played with uh, McDonald's All American uh, Josiah James. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a he's a five star at Tennessee now. Uh, but we, I credit a lot of where I'm at today because of him. He helped push me every single morning. Like okay. when he was in the gym at six a.m., I had Jeez. to be there too. So like, it helped it helped hold me accountable yeah. going to a small school where basketball was not. You know, it's not a cultural thing in the South. It's all gotcha. football. Not facts. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, I guess, what was, like, I guess paint a picture kind of like AAU basketball for people. Because, I mean, we've taught, I know baseball yeah. and kind of how that realm works. But, like, how I guess, how does, like, the AAU basketball world work, really? Uh, so, I mean, yeah. AAU is basically, you know, you travel across the country. You know, you play games against random teams in random cities, mm-hmm. guys from maybe one dude from South Carolina, one dude from Georgia, two dudes from Texas, all coming together on the same team, travel to a city together, and you just go play games in front of coaches and trying to get exposure. I think it's the best way to I must say basketball it. is like the most, I think, marketed sports, you know, there, especially back, back in high school when yeah. ball's life was really popular. And mm-hmm. hoop mistape and like, like it's like you can get it's different notice like you see all those yeah. Drake showing up at AAU yeah. games Quavo like yeah. those, like how I don't know if you've had any experience like that with like guys <laughs> pulling up or stuff but nah. like nah. looking at it it's like dang that's that's not bad yeah it is crazy yeah. it is crazy exposure hoopers get opposed to other sports. I yeah. think it's, I mean, more, it's more personal and it's more it can be more exciting it's hip-hop, like, and it's like, like culture, you right yeah. there on yeah. the court I think it has something know? to do with like we don't wear no no pads yeah. no gear no helmet mm-hmm. not, like That's you can see our face yes. all the time mm-hmm. so so talking about exposure South Carolina player of the year and Gatorade player of the year in high school over oh. Zion Williamson dang so oh. did, <laughs> hold on wait, wait. <laughs> hey, so, from South Carolina too yeah yeah but same year as all three, I guess, huh? Yeah, no, Ja was Ja, no, ja was a year, a year older. older than okay, me. he yeah, was a year actually. older. But yeah, same year, Zion. Same year, yeah. Did you ever play him in high school? Like, how was that? So we played him every year. Uh, okay. Play, yeah, I think three years. Three mm-hmm. years. Uh, first year we won in my gym. Sophomore year, mm-hmm. it was, we had like a Christmas tournament. I remember this was like before you know he blew up and everything. Yeah, and like yeah, we got there's this kid coming. He's supposed to be nice. Yada, 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 this, that, and the third. And we played him. And I remember I was like, man, this dude can't be all that. I was watching him warming up in the gym before the game. I was like, ah, this dude ain't all that. And he came down and monkey dunked the shit out of some shit. Hey, bro. come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know what I ain't never heard hey, that ain't before. I never heard that Ferocious, that was was ferocious like tore the rim off. Yeah. I was like, damn. Mm. But then we ended up winning the game, uh-huh. played him in uh, a South Carolina camp my junior year. He was like, that's when he was like, that's when he really blew up. He was like 13 for 13, mm-hmm. cooked us. We didn't even stand a chance. And my team was nice. Like yeah. we had we had like four D1 hoopers through okay. two D2 hoopers. So we was not like scrubs. Yeah. And he, he cooked us. And then my senior year, it was supposed to be like a big deal going to play him. 
because uh, like we were all like you know nationally ranked, all had offers and everything, and he was you know Zion Williamson, mm -hmm. and then he hurt his foot, and we didn't end up getting to play. Got you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you get the Vandy freshman year, and it's all this hype around the basketball team. First game, first home game, it's it's packed. It's packed. I, I remember vividly. You know what type of emotions going through your head? Like what's the feeling leading up to that game? You know, as a freshman. You know, like talk to me about about that experience. Uh, I was definitely nervous. Definitely yeah. the biggest crowd I ever played in front of up mm -hmm. until that point. Um, and I just knew we were we were supposed to be really good. Like yeah. the expectations because of pretty much my class, our freshman class. Like we were supposed to turn the program around and um, win games and make the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just, uh, I wouldn't say it was a lot of pressure, but it was definitely on my mind of like, all right, it's time to get started. And mm -hmm. obviously the dream was to make the NBA. And so this was like the stage to do it. So I was like, this is where my career really begins. Right. It's like mm -hmm. today. So mm -hmm. that's really what was going through my mind. So coming off of a impressive high school campaign and then being in this big class, you weren't really in the rotation early on, like freshman year. How did you like, what was your mindset with watching those guys out there being behind some of these guys? Because by the end of the year, we were running everything for you. So how did you stay locked in from not getting really a lot of real playing time in the beginning, staying locked in, like you said, you're a hard worker, staying locked in. And then when the end of the season came, every play is going through you. Uh, just being a sponge, you know, making the most of every opportunity that you get. Um, and being confident in myself, knowing no disrespect to anybody, but like knowing that the guys that were playing in front of me were not better than me and mm. keeping that confidence, mm. no matter even if uh, I'm not playing as much. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just as long as you have that confidence, whenever your opportunity comes, you're going to make the most of it. So. Bet. Nah, I feel that. Um, let's go. Uh, Give me like your welcome, your welcome to college moment. You know, welcome it can to be college. Yeah. Actually, not welcome to college. Let's not. Let's do welcome to basketball freshman year moment, not just yeah. college. You know, yeah, whether it's yeah, a practice, yeah. whether it's yeah, a game, yeah, yeah. like that type of thing. So it was actually my. I'll, I'll say it was on my visit when I came to visit here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't I don't think I committed yet, but I was watching the practice, and y'all know Saban. Saban yeah, Lee yeah. jumps out the gym. So we had this big dude. Well, they had this big dude. I didn't play with him. Uh, like strong, like looks like he would run through a brick wall. One hundred percent talking about Jerry Baptiste, uh, my boy. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. One hundred percent. Shout out my boy. So yeah, shout out him. So <laughs> Saber came down on a fast break, and I mean, whew, punished him, put him in the rim. Ooh. And I remember I was sitting down on the sideline and I looked at my dad and I was like, damn, yeah. this is called basketball? Mm. Like, this was like the first five minutes into practice. And I, I was shocked. Okay. So that was definitely like, all right, this is, this is real. real. Like, there's a different, there's a jump in the intensity. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Is that like the biggest difference between, cause we'll, we'll go to a professional in a little bit, but like, what's, what would you say like the biggest difference between high school ba basketball and then college basketball? Uh, speed, I would say the the jump for from high school to college and college to the NBA is just the speed of the game. Yeah. Um, and the one the thing that makes the players the things that makes the great players great is like their ability to slow the game down mm -hmm. faster than others. I mean, because I've heard you know I could be wrong, but I just heard people say that in the NBA it's not as fast as college or it's not as intense as college until it gets to a certain point in the NBA season. Then it starts to they play more defense, and then they like it, it picks up. Yeah, so. see, I, I mean, I disagree with that. Okay, like I, I mean, I think it looks it may look more lackadaisical on TV because we just make it look easier. Okay, you know yeah. what I mean? Like we're this is our craft. This is what we do. Mm. Like it's not easy to us, but we make it look easy. Right. So I feel that. Um, like the speed is faster. The guys are stronger. We hit harder. Like. And we play 100% every day. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't take days off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, every game is not like – now, there are games where you go out there and you're like, ah, I'm not feeling it today. Everybody yeah. has those days. But yeah. as soon as the, the tip ball is thrown up, mm -hmm. right, it's Showtime. 100% every time. Showtime. Yeah. 
Okay. So I guess now, I guess transitioning now. So college, 14th overall pick now. Now you show up to the first day in the Celtics um, practice uh, gym. What's that like? Like uh, you said, you saw Vanderbilt, like yeah. that first practice. What's that first practice like? Now you're a Boston Celtic. You playing next to Tatum, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, like. What are, those are some big name guys. So how is yeah. that? How mentally? How is that? Like okay, like you still do you still have to be like I'm that guy? Like no matter who you're playing against, how how was that? Yeah, that's uh yeah, it was definitely different. Like you know, I walk into the building and you see pictures of like Larry Bird and mm-hmm. all these all time greats that's plastered all over the wall, and um, that's it's a historic a, franchise. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's one of the most historic franchises ever. Like in almost all in all yeah. sports, pretty yeah. much. So yeah. it's like just being a part of that franchise was amazing. But walking into the gym that first day and getting to see that logo and my name, my name plate above the locker with the Celtics logo next to it was pretty cool. Um, but it was definitely a humbling experience uh, in our first practice. In what way? Watching like Jason and Jalen and how effortless they make the game look. Okay. Um, and their approach every day to the craft it was definitely uh, a learning curve. So okay. you, you talk about being a sponge, you know, your freshman year at Vandy. I'm sure you took the same mindset to your rookie year. What are some things that you observe without them telling you? And then give me some that you, I guess, some game that they've given you as well. So like you're just watching them like, okay, I can take this from them. Okay. Yeah. Like that type of thing. Um, I mean, off the floor, one person that I learned a lot from just watching, I never even talked to him about it, was Al Horford. Mm, Al, yeah, yeah, Al, yeah, yeah. yeah vet, the yes. vet of vets. He's been around right. forever. And when I tell you, he has the same routine every single day. Mm. Off day, game day, practice day, he has a routine for all of it. And he comes in the same time every day does the same thing every, every day. day. It yeah. is crazy. I was amazed. Mm-hmm. So I it really, that I took from him almost immediately. Like, I got to find my routine. Mm-hmm. Like, I can take some stuff from him, but that's not going to help me. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, my body's different. I'm wired differently. I think differently. So what is going to make me better that I could do every single day? So that was the biggest thing I learned probably from anybody over there was – the process of like making sure you have your own routine to get yourself ready to play. That's that's huge. Yeah. I want to take us back to college one more time because your freshman year, we talked about it. You start, you averaged eleven points, thirty nine from the field, and thirty three from three. Then you took a big jump your sophomore year for twenty three points per game on 50% from the field and 52 for three. Dang. On Hold seven on. attempts a game, no joke. Like, that, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't easy. Strap. That ain't easy. Like, yeah. what clicked for you? Uh, honestly, man, I was hungry. I wanted it. Uh, at the end of my freshman year, I had a chance to leave. I had some people call me and tell me you should leave, and I could be, like, a 50th, like, in the late 50s. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want that. Like, I didn't want to be a 50, I wanted to be a first round pick. I wasn't going to leave unless I was the first round pick. But when I got those phone calls, that was, the dream was always to play in the NBA, yeah. but that's when it really became real. I was like, I can go get it. So I really buckled down that summer and there was nothing that was going to get in my way of making it. Like every single day, I, okay. I knew I was going to make it. And then one thing yeah, that, like that helped me, like helped me that. out was like, when Coach Stack got the job, um, uh, my fresh, my rookie year. I mean, my freshman year. Mm-hmm. My coach got fired. We were not good. Yeah. Um, Stat comes in. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had the the draft possibility, and then I had transfer possibility. Or mm-hmm. some schools that, you know, were reaching out to me that didn't reach out to me in high school. You know, some yeah. of the big name schools. And I thought about it. Get Stat gave me one phone call and was basically like, "I'm gonna have you for one year." He was like, "We gonna have this year." And I'm gonna get you out of here. Like, mm. So once we had that phone call, so I was like, "All right, here. I'm coming back, and we're gonna go do this thing." And that was pretty much it. 
Dang, real quick, like we, I want to stay on that. What was like Jerry Stackhouse coming in? What was that like? What was the differences you felt like? Like you said, you had that phone call, but what did it, what did it feel like for you? Um, and what did it like? Yeah. What did it look like? Well, he brought the, the he had? brought the pro mindset to Vandy. Like, okay. I would say it definitely. My mindset to the game changed. Like I had a college mindset my uh, my freshman year here. And then my sophomore year, I treated the game like a professional from like every day, like from when I ate to my sleeping routine to like how I just how I approach mm-hmm. the game on a daily basis. And uh, every practice, every lift session, like we brought professionals in every sector from assistant coach to strength coach. So I really felt like I was in a pro system my sophomore year. Mm-hmm. So that helped a lot. Yeah, because that ain't no small name. That's. That man really he yeah, did. You know what's yeah. crazy? When he when we got the bleacher report, people were like, I would remember being in the wreck. People were like, Who's Jerry Stackhouse? <laughs> I was like, Are y'all serious? <laughs> like, yeah, no, that, that was actually bad. like a crazy thing. Like people That's were crazy. like, I don't yeah. like they didn't like watch him play, like they didn't mm-hmm. know who he was. I'm like, man. Y'all wildin' for this Honestly, one. Not not too many people get to have a like a coach like that. Somebody who played for a long time and did it very well. Yeah. And he's now your coach. Yeah. yeah. Like, not many people can no, it doesn't say that. Like that. I don't yeah. think it really happens, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know? Uh, so, I guess, what did you see from him besides he brought the, the pro mindset and, like, the pro atmosphere, the culture, like, to you guys? But, like, just him in general, like, what, what has he meant to you from, I guess, a leadership perspective? Uh, maybe – Coach, like friend, like what's his influence? Nah, on he you? meant a lot. Uh, he still means a lot. That's why I'm here now. We're having yeah. a little like pros weekend uh, for guys coming back. And anytime you know, Stack asks some of me, I'm gonna try and do it because yeah. he's had a big impact. But biggest thing for me during that year was he held me accountable in a way that I haven't been held accountable before. Okay, like, he made sure I was the best version of myself every single day. Um, and I'm, he had the system where like we graded defense. You remember that, yeah, John? I definitely do. So it was like I don't remember if it was like a first game. But it was our first couple games, and we had this defensive system. We had a way for the grading our defense, whatever. And let's say I was like a minus twelve on the day, mm-hmm. which is not you know it wasn't good. Yeah. And I played like thirty two minutes that day. We would come into film the next day, and he would always have this piece of paper he'd fold up. And he come and sit down. He put the he put the thing up. He said just like this. <laughs> <laughs> he said just like this and be quiet for a second so everybody could find their name and look at their numbers. And I remember he was like, "Son, you playing 32 minutes and you were minus 12." I ain't gonna repeat the rest of what he said. <laughs> but nah. he, he gave me he gave me an earful, and yeah. I remember from that. That's when I really picked up my defense from that moment. Before I was like. Okay. It, it matters. Yeah. So he held me accountable in ways that I just hadn't been held accountable before. Facts. I yeah. like that. She. Let's get. Let's get back into NBA, man. Who's hardest guy you've had to guard so far? <laughs> oh yeah. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get messy. Yeah, yeah. Hardest guy you've had to guard so far. Uh, last year, Paul George he gave me the work. Like Ooh, really. Uh, I remember. So we played the Clippers second half of the season in Indiana. Mm-hmm. I don't think Paul George played the when we played him in in L.A. Mm-hmm. Um, my job last year was, you know, to guard one of the two best players on the team. So I, so, I did that every every okay. game all season. Well, so I, on yeah. people. So I had the Paul George assignment. So I'm watching film before the game with my coach, and he was like, "Make him take these shots." Mm-hmm. You know, like we're not, you're not gonna stop him, but we're gonna contain sure. him. Yeah. Like try and make him take these shots. These tough, tough twos. Yeah. So the game starts. I think I got him. I, I'm watching him. I'm like, I got his rhythm. I got his rhythm. He gets the ball like off the tip. He's on the, the top, the right wing. Okay. He catches the ball, does a little move. Looks like he's trying to pass. And I was like, yeah, okay, okay. I was like sitting to the game. I was like, okay, he's going <laughs> to pass. He's going to pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sat down. Okay. I was like, all right, I'm good. Like he's going to get off of it. That's how I get into the game. You know, I get to yeah. get the butterflies out. He's like, nah. Mm. Shoots it. I'm right there. It's yeah. water. They didn't even touch the rim. I look back at my coach. My coach is like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, it's, it's good deep. Like, he's yeah. like, it's cool. It's cool. We go down. We come back again. I swear, man. The same, like, 
bing, bing, pull up right there. Nothing but water. Damn. And I looked back again. And I was like, he's like, just, just, just stick with it. Stick with it. And he gave me 45. Oh, I, oh, my, oh, oh, oh. I fouled out the game. Oh, oh. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it was a long day. 45? Yeah. Man. That's a long day at the office right there. It was there. a long day, lie. man. What co- coach day. was like, ah, right, it's cool. It's cool. He'd be like, coach, you need to come <laughs> out here. This shit ain't cool. Help me, bro. God. Oh, my God. I guess, yeah. yeah. So how it, like, I don't know, from being, like, I know fans' perspectives and people watching, like, they see these big names. And, like, I know to you guys being an athlete, it's like, all right, it's just another person. But, like, how is it when you, like, because you just said you're guarding, like, the Paul Georges, like, these big name guys that are – how is that mentally? How do you prepare for that? I mean, it was real, uh, really like my rookie year. The first time you get to like, you know, strap them up and compete with those guys. Mm-hmm. It's a great, it's a great feeling to be like, I looked up to this guy, you know, my whole life. I've watched them and I get to share the court with them and, and compete at a high level. Yeah. Um, so that was really like my rookie year. Past that, now it's all just like, you know, this is another guy, you know, mm-hmm. playing, playing ball. I'm trying to beat him. He's trying to beat me. You know That's what I mean? True. But still respect the work that he's put in and how great, you know, all these guys are. No, that's right. So going to your rookie year, kind of hinted that I was going to go here. I remember you telling me a few stories, but I want to get to particularly about the story about LeBron, that first time you played LeBron in L.A. Uh, tell us a little <laughs> bit about that. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I want to hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this sounds good. Yeah. So my rookie year was around – Christmas time, I think. Um, I wasn't playing, so like my rookie, I didn't play that much. Uh, and I was driving to the game. I hadn't played in like three or four games before that. It's been a while. I was just, you know, sitting down watching the games. And I'm driving to the game, I'm talking to my dad. Lakers, Celtics. They've been hyping this up yeah. all week for real. They, we had practice on like a Monday. Like this is the Lakers, Celtics. Like let's go. Like we got to win this game. Uh, yada yada yada. So game day comes, I'm driving to the game. I call my dad, my dad was like, hey, let's go, man. Like, let's have a good game today. You know, trying to, you know, give me a little pep talk. And I was like, man, it's Celtics Lakers. I haven't played all week. I'm not playing today. Yeah. For real, I, right. I really, I, I was like, bro. I know where this I was going. like, bro, I said, I'm not getting in. Whenever so, you say yeah. that, whenever <laughs> you say <laughs> that. Oh. Dog, so the first quarter comes around, I don't get in. It's the end of the first quarter. I'm standing like in the back of the huddle. And I'm like watching, I'm watching Brad Stevens draw up a play. And I'm sitting there chilling. And he's like, Neesmith, get JT. Me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I said, for real? I was like, okay. <laughs> so I take, I take my, my shooting shirt off. I sit down. Once again, I have not played in like a week. Sit down. He's like, boom, boom, boom. This is the play. The play was I was going to run at JB, Jalen Brown, and I was going to backdoor it. So I get in, I go to the corner, I'm standing there waiting for the Lakers to come out. Lakers come out, LeBron runs straight to me. Mm. Mm. He does his little, you know, a little trot. So he does his little trot to me. And I was like, oh boy. <laughs> so he does his little trot to me. I'm standing in the corner, play starts, JB's coming at me. I go to run at him to fake the back door. Yeah. Man, LeBron is like at the block. And he's like, back door. Back door straight into his chest. And he was like, bro. You have not played. Like you're not getting the ball first thing you come into the game. I don't know. <laughs> no. you talking to you? Bro, yeah. <laughs> you said that to you? So I go to I go through to the other side, uh, play finishes, you go down again, boom, whatever. I play like my four or five minutes, I come out the game. Um then LeBron's talking to my teammate. Not yeah, he's talking to my teammate because uh-huh. he was guarding him and he was like, it was a timeout. He's standing in front of our bench, balls on the other end of the floor. So he was like, this is what I'm going to do to you. I'm going to have the ball right. I'm going to throw my hand up. I'm going to tell him to throw it to the hand. I'm going to put my right leg over yours. I'm going to fade away, and it's going to be a bucket. What? Right. About 30 seconds later, he had him right here. Throw it to the hand. Throw it to the hand. <laughs> Boom. Bucket. Try to right back down. I said, oh, my God. That's this different. Different. Man, I'm kind of speechless. I ain't gonna lie to you, though. That's yeah. like you hear stories about it, but you're like, all right, how true is it, really? Yeah. They say he be calling out plays, like he'll call out like your play, which I'm about to run, and he'll he'll talk to you, like all that type of stuff. Yeah, that, I mean, some of that is real, but some of that is also yeah. like just scout. Like some yeah. of that is really just like basic scout. Okay, yeah. I got you. Uh, 
Give me a man. Let's stick to this, man. Give yeah, me a yeah, yeah. I, well, I just want to go. Give me your Mount Rushmore of just shooters, pure shooters, just pure shooters. That's it. Not of all time. Yeah. Just current NBA right now. Oh, current NBA. Yeah. Current NBA. No, it's this all time. Was all time. Yeah, it's all time. time. It's all time. Steph Curry. I had five, right? Yeah. Steph Curry, Ray Allen, JJ Redick. Ooh, yeah. Kyle Korver, Reggie Miller. Who's the last one? Reggie, Reggie Miller. Miller. Okay. Yeah. Is that an order? Nah. Or that just, we just listen, yeah, we just listen to them. Okay. Who we forgetting? Did he, uh, he said Steph. I mean, he didn't say Ray. Clay. He didn't say he Clay. Didn't say I think Clay. Clay definitely has an argument to be hey, up why there. Why not Clay? Sure. I mean, I'm not trying to sit here and say Clay can't shoot. Clay's one of the greatest shoes ever. Right. But I'm, you asked for my top five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give me. You got to give me. No, I feel you there. Okay. Did, did you say Ray Allen on my trip? He said Ray. 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 Anybody else? Trying to think. So Steph, Ray, Kyle Korver, JJ Reddick. Is there any shooters in the league that you've worked with that you're like, that they really helped me? In the league? Nah, nah. No? Mm -hmm. Who would you say has helped you then? Honestly, uh, my old coach, you know, you know I'm Jake Diebler. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah, going yeah, into my yeah, sophomore yeah. year, we worked a lot on my footwork and stuff. So that was definitely uh, real helpful for me as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, give me a – now, that's, that's a score. I mean, a shooter. Now, give me, like, just pure pure score. Current NBA right now. Current NBA like right a now. A walking bucket. Walking bucket. JT. Yeah. Um, okay. Luca. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, That's two. tough. Paul George. Paul, three, okay. Um, you're talking straight bucket, not like he's my straight top. Bucket. Straight bucket. He just, I'm, I'm he talking just about a bucket. bucket. Oh, yeah. JT, Luca, Paul George, Donovan Mitchell. Ooh, okay, okay. Hmm. I'm going to go DeMar DeRozan. Oh, I'm about to Ooh. get petty. I'm about to get petty. Where KD? Ah, uh, I was about to say, I, 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 hold on, I, I'm about to get Petty nah, with KD. You're right, you're right, you're right. Katie got to be in there. Katie do got to be in there. That's a seven footer. Get nah, you. you're right. Katie got to be in there. That's who else? Who else? Who, who, you, who you got, John? Who, who, who who's missing? I mean, did you say book? Didn't he say didn't, say, he book. didn't say book. <laughs> so that's the thing. I because always there was the, the big argument before, like your rookie year, going into your rookie year, was Booker Tatum. I think that was a big thing going on. Also, Kuz Kuzma was in there because Kuzma was going crazy his rookie year. Kuzma was going crazy. Yeah, that was his rookie year, right? True, yeah, true. he was going crazy. Yeah, he was. Why? Why do you feel like Tatum gets more respect than Book in the league? If you even feel like that's the case, I feel like that's yeah. the case. I would just say like people don't realize how tall JT is. JT really six ten, and he's got broad shoulders. So mm -hmm. like, even if you're playing good defense and you can t you can test. Mm -hmm. It's easy for him to shoot over you. D book is like six six, six seven. Mm -hmm. So there is more of a little contest there. It's just and I mean both of them make the game look effortless. Right. But I was I think that's the big difference. Biggest difference. Yeah. So Boo asked me this yesterday. I'm gonna ask you. Start, bench, cut. You got Book, you got Tatum, you got Luka Doncic. That's tough. I'm not answering that. <laughs> That's a start hard bench one. cut. Yeah, start bench cut. I'm gonna start my man JT. I'm gonna bench to. Luca, and then uh, I'm gonna have to cut D book. Okay. Dang. Okay. There's a hey, the more yeah, I think somebody about it, gotta go. Somebody there's gotta so go. So many scores in the league that are like he didn't say Dame Dollar. I miss with Dame. We Dollar haven't even heavy. talked about that, bro. There's so you many know? scores out there. That shit's crazy. Mm. You really got scores that aren't the big names. So, like, let's go into that. What are some, like, did you see, and you've been in the league a few years bro, now. Spencer did. Uh, I was going to say, did yeah, what, yeah, yeah. Spencer did what he is, a bucket. Yeah. Yeah, bro. And he's not, he's not like, the big name guy on his mm -hmm. team. But that dude, top of the scout. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah top of the scout. Him. Yeah, give uh, me five. Give me five, like, underrated guys yeah, that guys. people don't, yeah. like, sneaky, yeah, yeah, sneaky guys that people don't know about just because they might not get either the attention or the ball. They, yeah, there's just not yeah. enough uh, time for them to get the ball, basically. Mm-hmm. Jordan Clarkson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Clarkson. <laughs> <You> <laughs> I got to do anything. You, you don't get it. You, don't, you ain't got tattoos. You ain't Go ahead, it. It's yeah. a community. You're not part of it. 
He not in that. He not in that. He not. In uh, I'll say those two are the main ones okay. that I can think of right now. You'd have to start naming some yeah, other guys. Let me think. I like what's his name for Dallas. I know you got a strap, uh, Hardaway Jr. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he can shoot. Yeah, yeah him. Brunson when he was he left, but he he right, finally he, got he, his. He, nice. He finally got his. Once he got to New York, right. he got his own. Like exactly. he got he made a name for himself. But in exactly. Dallas, he was kind of under. To me, I thought he was under Luca. He. Well, yeah, he definitely was. Yeah, yeah. he definitely Everybody was. Everybody on the team, and Luca misses him now. Yeah, they, for messed, sure. they messed that up. <laughs> <laughs> they messed that up. Yeah, I, I like, I like Drew Holiday as a bucket. Oh, bro, right? yo, that's a good one. Yeah, yo, Drew Holiday. Oh, he, like he's a, I, I know yeah. his name, but he's yeah, not. But you know, nah, he's bro. probably only one time. Oh, he's so def- definitely, yeah, bro, Drew Holiday is, he's tough. Mm. I think he's definitely one of the most underrated dudes in the league. Mm-hmm. Like when we played him, my second year in Boston. We played the Bucks in the, in the playoffs, mm-hmm. and it was like game six. And he basically won game six for the Bucks in Boston. He like, I remember he read the play, shut it down. Smart had the play on the, uh, on the, on the baseline. Yeah, yeah. And he literally palmed his shot, mm-hmm. took it out the air, while falling out of bounds, turned around, threw it off Smart, pretty much ball game. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, he's one of the best defenders by far in the league. So cool. get yeah, into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Get into the finals run, man. Like that's that was a crazy. Like, was there at what point were you like we could really make the finals? We beat the Bucks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris Milton was hurt, so he didn't play. Right. So when we had the Bucks slated, um, I thought we were going to beat them, but I thought they were still the biggest hump to get to the finals was the Bucks. Yeah. No disrespect to the Heat because right. they took us to Game Seven, so right. it was a tough series. Um, but I just thought once we beat the Bucks, I was like, all right, we we are really about to make it to the finals. Mm-hmm. But that was definitely a cool experience being able to play at the the peak mm-hmm. of professional basketball and basketball as a whole. You know, mm-hmm. getting to be a part of the finals. You know, I got my I got my points in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I, didn't, I didn't play. Facts. I didn't play, but when I got that uh, end of the miss, I made sure to get a little bucket quick. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I feel that. So, what's your take on the whole world champions of what? <laughs> <laughs> in recent uh, news, <laughs> world champions you know, of what? Apparently, the United know. States. Yeah, but uh, I don't know what he on. He's tripping. Yeah. Because my thing is, it's not just Americans right. playing. There's literally the best players in the world. Yeah. If you're the best basketball player in the world, you play in the NBA. It's point blank, period. Yeah. Come on. I think Stephen A. So, says something like it's like. Six continents, yeah, yeah, like over like forty some countries. Yeah, you but know? you know, it was the like best player in the a league. Third, yeah. A third is, of the yeah. NBA is in, international. Yeah, you know? so, I mean, yeah. I understand it's in the U.S., but my man, <laughs> <laughs> ain't just U.S. players, right? Yeah, yeah. I think he he was. I know, I know, feeling, I know he was, he was coming from. Yeah, I know where he's coming. No, he, he, went, was he went. To, that's yeah, he went. Yeah, he won. He won the hundred, two hundred, and then four the, by uh, four by four. four which, he's a dog. He, 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 he's we'll getting we'll after we'll it, but we'll I mean, give him a pass. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, he just don't know. Yeah. yeah, he just don't know. He think you got to play against other countries to be the best in the world, but that's not the case here. Yeah, I get it. He probably yeah. just trying to get more eyes to track, but it's just that's not, that's not how. <laughs> it worked. It worked. Hey, but it worked. Talking yeah, about it right there. It's still not going to surpass yeah. the yeah. NBA. Any publicity that's is right. good publicity. Yeah. That's, that's right. true. Yeah, so um, just. Man, what's a, give me a game that you, that you can get back. A game that you, you know, like, if I can get that game back, please let me get outside, like right now, I'll take it. NBA or like NBA? Don't, it, it don't, college, both. All right. There was one game in college I definitely want back, and that's uh, we played Tennessee. Mm. It was, they were number one in the country for the like first, first, second time school history, and this was we were the first game that they played since they were number one, and we were cutting them up all day. Like we was we was whooping them, and we were not. We had talent. Like we had four NBA guys on our team. If mm-hmm. Mistake me if I'm wrong, right? No, you did. You say Matt Ryan. It's three at the time. Yeah. So we had three three NBA guys on our team at the time. So we were talented, but we just couldn't finish games. So we were beating them the whole time. And fourth quarter comes along. This is where we lost every single game my freshman year. Mm-hmm. And they start coming back. You know, they were older. You know, they started just you know 
taking the game slowly, wearing us down. And it was about like two minutes left. <sighs> Grant Williams, my teammate in Boston for two years. Yeah. So he reminds me about this game a lot. Uh, he got a technical foul with Cleavon Brown. Cause Which it was not. It was not a technical foul. They put in this new rule, I think, because Kevin Love hurt his shoulder in the playoffs about like hooking on rebounds. So Grant is the type of person to read the rule book. Like he'll <laughs> read the rule book from front to back. I heard he was, and he'll yeah. you know mm-hmm. he'll cheat the system a little bit. So he knew the rule. He put his hand in there, got the technical foul, got the ball back, two free throws, turned it, changed the whole game. And I. We, it, we were up by two with like 40 seconds left. I know you remember this. Mm-hmm. We had a play we went over like 10 <laughs> times in shoot around. It was a lob play, oh my God. out of bounds. His name was Jordan Bowden. Mm-hmm. He came on the right wing, Ooh. set it up. I mean, f- four guys on the floor all said, watch the lob, watch the lob. My teammate literally looked at him, watched him run across the arc. <laughs> came down, threw the lob straight out of bounds, cocked it back, dunked it so hard, it rolled all the way to the other side of the floor. The other and side, I, bro. And I mean, the crowd was... This, this is at Vandy. This is at Vandy. Vandy. Okay, okay, this, okay, I remember yeah. that game. This is like, the only sold out game I ever played. Only sold out game I ever played at Vandy. Bone through the... Yeah. yeah, I think it was bone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it like dropped on the floor and just rolled. Yeah, and I mean, like you could hear like a pin drop before the play that was started. Break, yeah. And I mean, like, bro, that, 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 that crowd went crowd. crazy. Yeah. Tennessee had the crowd after that. Like, I'll never forget. Yeah. I, could st- I still You were pissed off after that game. I saw, so, I, I saw I, the... There's a reason why I was <laughs> mad. Because that was really, the, that was like the first game my freshman year where I really, like, I took a jump. You did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. I was, I really hooped that game. And I had a game-saving block. Yeah. Um, to so force my force overtime. To force overtime. Mm-hmm. Like, we were, the game was tied with, like, 10 seconds left. My teammate turned it over. I saw the turnover happen. I took off, chased down, saved the block, hurt my knee. And my teammate got the ball off the block and turned it over immediately. And I remember I laid down on the court like, oh my yeah, God, that's bro. Tough. And we went to overtime and we lost. Yeah, so that's was, tough. Uh, that's a game I wish yeah. I could have back. A lot of mistakes were made. So I know how I would be talking to you about that if I was Grant Williams. Like when Grant brings it up, what is he? What is he saying? He admit. He admitted. He was like, "Oh yeah, 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 bro." He admitted. Yeah, he flopped. Cause that was probably the most impressive game I saw at Vanderbilt. Cause he had nah, yeah, he was that game. They gave him the Michael yeah, Jordan free throw. Hey, twenty two for like, hello, twenty three. Yeah, I'm dude, like, it was twenty three for twenty three. Yeah, and he like, was like shooting seventy two percent coming in. Like he locked Dang. in. I was like, yo, mm. he wasn't yeah, playing. Nah, yeah. He was hooping that game. He was yeah. SEC Player of the Year that year. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was crazy. Yeah, no, nah, he was That's killing. I right, give you your NBA one again. You can get back in NBA. Hmm. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know if I really have one yet. Okay. Because mm-hmm. yeah. I played. In, you know, I made the playoffs two out of my three years, but personally, I didn't contribute to that enough. Mm-hmm. I got you. On my own, for myself to be like, yeah, I want I that one back, yeah, yeah, yeah. and like I really earned that. You mm-hmm. know, like you like winning the finals, for example. Mm-hmm. Wanted to win, you know, hands down. But like, if we won the finals and I got the ring, I made like a promise to myself, I was gonna lock it away. I wasn't even gonna open it. Like as soon as they handed it to me, I was gonna keep it closed and lock it away and put it somewhere and never look at it till I actually like you know won one where I was like you know playing and contributing to the win. In my yeah. part, that was just for me. Yeah. Where does that come from? Because you've said things like that like a few times mm-hmm. now. Like, where does that internal like, I'm gonna hold myself accountable to a higher standard because I know what I'm capable of come from? I don't know, man. It's really. I guess I say it's my dad. My dad held me to a high standard, um, and I just it's kind of just something that stuck with me forever. Like just making sure I'm the best version of myself. Like we had, I heard this quote here with Stack and it's been my favorite quote ever since. It was like, be 1% better today than you were yesterday. And in a hundred days, you'll be a hundred percent better. And so I just lived my life by that. And like, mm-hmm. if I don't like, if I like what I, like if I look, if I could look back in time 
and I saw myself a year ago and I liked what I saw, mm -hmm. that means I didn't get better. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that's mm -hmm. kind of just how I live my life. Like a year from now, I want to be able to look back and say, I don't like what I looked like a year ago. Yeah. Cause that means I improved. Yeah. Bad. What's a, what's a big misconception about the NBA that you wish people who didn't play knew? That the bench players are trash? <laughs> yeah, I was bro. Gonna, I was yeah. Fat, bro, they be like, oh, he's yeah. terrible. He's yeah. like, yeah. but you will not. And see that goes him. for any sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's like, true. Baseball, football, soccer, bro. Everybody's not. If you make it to the pinnacle of your sport, you are nice. Yeah, I took you that too. Facts. I'm like, bro. It was like, was was this guy good? I'm like, where he played at this school, or yeah. he's at like, this bro, level. He was like, the he's best good. player <laughs> on his team for yeah. his entire life. Facts. Yeah. No, that is, and like if you one. ever mess up with him, bro, it's it's quiet. Yeah. It's, it's quiet. He's cooking you. A good example is Pat Bev. Like people like say, oh, he's right. not good, they but like, can't he, hoop. He, like putting up forty four points in high school. Yeah. Like, he averaged like thirty, whatever he averaged nah, in high school. He was, was like a dog. It's like, dude, don't think because they got these roles yeah. now yeah. that it's they not like, like that. A, yeah, just being a star on your role. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's good. No, uh, I guess what's more for you, you personally, what. If you've done it already or not, what is what is a better feeling? Either dunking on somebody, blocking somebody's sh like shot, or I guess like a step back three, like with somebody all over you. I used to say blocking a shot. Uh huh. I used to say that for the longest time, up until last year. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them why. Hey, what, uh, why, why? Why you say that? Come so on. when I dunked on uh, when I dunked on Jared Allen. Mm. Yeah, that feeling was crazy. Mm. I remember I that. Know, I didn't even know what that to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was crazy. That know. was actually crazy. Set that moment right, up. Right through that play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't even see that play. Yeah, uh, my teammate Buddy, uh, Buddy Hill, but gets up a lot of threes. He can shoot. Um, so he was getting in his old, he was getting in his rhythm package of like he's about to put it up. Mm -hmm. So I was getting ready to crash. So he does his he does his thing. He goes to a shooting motion and the dude's there. So he's in the air and he has to get rid of it and he just throws it to me. So I'm like halfway leaning forward. So I catch it off balance a little bit, come back, give a quick jab, go left. And Jared Allen's on the other block. So before the game, one of our uh, interns, he came up, I was working on floaters before the game. And he came up to me, he was like, Jared Allen come across the lane, you gonna dunk on him? I said, nah, straight floater. I swear, literally said straight floater. Game come, fourth quarter, three minutes left. I see Jared Allen across the lane, and I was like, if I don't dunk it, it's getting sent to the third row. So it's really, that's really, I was really out of necessity. I was like, yeah. I have to dunk this, or it's getting sent. Yeah. So that's really it. Yeah, and it just boom. You're just so casual, but. Flush. So yeah, crazy. that was yeah, nah, yeah. that was nuts. <laughs> that crowd in there was going crazy. Is it usually packed for at Indiana games? Because so they said the crowd last like the year before I got there mm -hmm. was not too good. Yeah, uh, but still this COVID year though restrictions. Yeah, probably. this year they said it was it was really good though. It's, gotcha. Yeah, it was pretty full yeah. all year. What's the yeah. biggest crowd you've played in front of NBA wise? I'll tell you what, man. TD Garden is loud. Really? Yeah. Like since I played there for two years, uh -huh. I didn't realize it because you know I was home court. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But coming back there this last year and we played there for the first time, uh -huh. bro, that place is loud. It was. It was the the lights were bright. I will say uh -huh. the lights were bright. Yeah. The Boston fans are different though. They are different. Like, hey, yeah. just that whole they get Boston after. in itself is different. Yeah. Man, I got some story, but we ain't gonna go yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> Boston different. So you 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 got to to Boston maybe a year or two after. Like tell us what you can after Kyrie. Like what was like the if you heard anything like like the the good stuff you know yeah. like about Kyrie. Mm. Kyrie, everything I heard about Kyrie from there was like, he's one of the most talented guys like yeah. ever. Like if he touches the basketball, anything he does with the basketball is like amazing. And I mean like playing against him, I don't see it playing against him because I'm focused on the game, but then I'll go back and like I'll watch either my game or I'll see Kyrie highlights and I'm like, damn. Hmm. Like, mm -hmm. how did he do that? Yeah. Like, so the stuff he does with the basketball really is like unbelievable. Yeah, he makes it look so easy. 
So easy. Like he truly has the ball on the string. Yeah. You know. Oh, he could do it. I, EG I think does I, too though. Yeah. EG I think I heard that. something where he <laughs> said like they were saying like he plays defense on offense. Like he literally like whatever you do, he's just gonna yeah. let you make the move. Yeah, he's, yeah, like, he's he, got something for you. Yeah, like he's gonna wait for you to mess up. Like yeah. he's just gonna dribble and like you take a step this way, then he's got a package for that. Like, how something crazy like, is yeah, that? It's like, ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But yeah, DG's yeah, it, he's his, DG's change of pace has got to be like top three. It's, it's in top the tier. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 right, it's top so like, tier. This is when I knew DG was like nice, nice. Yeah. So my when my freshman year, we came in the summer. Like the first couple weeks, we're playing five on five open gym. DG comes down, transition towards me, hits me with a simple like between cross, like nothing crazy. Yeah. But the the pace at which he did it at. Bro, he did it at the three point line. I ended up on the block, and like, yeah, hey, yeah. <laughs> like it was one of those, you know, like I, y'all, y'all don't really hoop like that though, do y'all? Nah. nah, nah. So like, it was one of those like you get like you get crossed or whatever, you stop and like you gotta like look back and you okay, can't yeah. get you can't recover to contest. Yeah, it was one of those, and I was like, oh. Yeah, he's nice. Ah, damn. Yeah, he's nice. He got me. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I had something else for you, man. Um, from a what? I guess not one that you want back. What? Maybe a game that you game or series, whatever it may be, that you want to you know just relive it because it was so good. Like the energy from the crowd, the the lead up, the locker room, the pregame, like everything was just so good. Like give me that series, like give me that game again, so I can experience those emotions again. Mm. Definitely the Cavs game, because I also had a great, I had a good overall game that mm-hmm. entire game. Um, I had like three baskets down the stretch to win the game for us. It was a game against Orlando this year. Um, I had like two threes and crunch time, got an offensive rebound to win the game, hit two free throws to win the game. Um, those two games were definitely yeah. really fun this year. So it seems like for you and more, it's like, like for example, I, I'll give like one of mine that I w- want to relive again is uh, definitely Omaha and we played Louisville. And the guy was mowing us down pretty much for like six. I watched that game. Six, seven <laughs> innings. Like he yeah. was mowing us down mm-hmm. and he was hella cocky. Yeah. He talking shit. He was in his bag that like, game. He was. <laughs> like, like rightfully so, you know. <laughs> right, like he was crazy. Crazy. I, just, I know. I remember exactly where I yeah. was watching that game because he was going crazy. He was going yeah. crazy. Yeah, and he, he <laughs> off balance, like he was doing his thing. But it was like, it was that turning point when he – Struck out our guy, Julian, yep. and he told him, go sit the fuck down. I was like, oh, hold on, yeah, dog. Yeah. You know? It was over. And like, yeah, the locker room, over. I mean, like, the, the bleachers clear, everybody in front of the, the dugout, dugout, and we just like, talking. Yeah. Kumar told me, bitch. Yeah, I, and <laughs> that, was, that was something I wanted to, like, how, what is the, for better terms, the shit talking like in the NBA? Because it's like for baseball, it's, 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 very it's very minimal and it's tough to really yeah. like. It's not existent really until really? moments like that. Moments it's like that is when it's when it gets real hype or like some. It's tense. Yeah, Maybe yeah. you might say something. Yeah, I guess you don't really word. make too much like. You're never really yeah. like right in front mm, of somebody. Yeah, that the way sense. you guys are like yeah. it is. Uh, I mean, I don't really talk trash unless I'm, someone talks to me first. I'm not okay. gonna start it. But one dude who's a sneaky sneaky trash talker is Clay Thompson. Really? really? Yeah, bro. I, they be that saying that a little bit. Yeah. He be, they be saying that, and I, I saw the thing with him and Dame. They yeah, he's just, he was throwing yeah. the four rings up, but yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, he'll talk some shit. Um, is he like just like directly at you, or they just like, like how is it like the? I mean, for the most part, I mean, some guys do it mainly to get themselves going. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, that's a big part of it. So like me personally, I like to I'll talk to my like I get going by talking to myself rather than talking to somebody else. Okay. Um, but some dudes, they just need they need the back and forth to get themselves yeah. real amped up for the game. Now, honestly, that's I think that's just pure. I look at it as just pure competition when it comes to that. It's fun, yeah, it yeah, is fun. It does yeah. make it fun because if you you can relate it back to just a, a pickup game, five on five. Yeah. You know, it's like it's talk. If it's quiet, it's boring. It's, yeah, like, it's, it's boring. It's like what are we doing? Because low, even like for baseball, it's like when you get in those moments and you start talking, like it's like, dang, now the game, like, like that go. Louisville game changed. Yeah, it's like, okay, now, now, we, got, now we got something to go. Yes. But now, now we're going. Sure. And I guess for you, like moving into this year, like what are your, I don't know if you've made any goals yet or like what is your, 
What are you looking to do this year? Because this is what, year four? Year four. Year four. Um, second year with the Pacers. So, like, what are you – what you looking to get into this year? How you how you gonna attack the season? I'm trying to make the playoffs. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. I think for us, that's like so so goal. And yeah. I'm a big believer. Like everything comes with winning. So <clears throat> like any individual accolades, any guys on my team won or trying to get, all that comes with success. So like if we win as a team and we make the playoffs, everybody's gonna get their flowers. Yeah. So we that's my only goal. About- Tyrese Halliburton, how is – I know he went through the whole thing. He went off this year. Like, how – what's he like? What, what's the he's a great dude, conception man. on he's him? Great. He's a his shorts, actually. Shout out, Tyrese. Mm. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Shout so, him out. Um, but, no, he's, he's a great guy. He's a real joy to play with. I say, like, what makes him, him real special is – obviously, he's a really good basketball player, but he mm-hmm. plays with such a joy every time he's on the floor. Like, it brings everybody's energy level up. So I, I would say that's one underrated thing about him that people don't – you don't get to see that, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, two things before we get out of here, man. Uh, first one, give us your favorite, best, funniest, you know, um, locker room, hotel, bus ride, plane, yeah, story. Y'all got some good ones. You know, give me, know give me one, one, one of those, one of those places. Funniest, 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 funniest. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that question. Yeah, I know yeah. It, it get rowdy in the locker room. Yeah, it get rowdy in the locker room. The bus rides be going crazy. Plane um, rides. Hotel probably I gotta, different. I gotta think of. Uh, I, 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 I can think of one. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. That Bruh, one. Right. That's one. So this was my. This, I think this was my rookie. Year. Yeah, this was my rookie year. So, <laughs> so Grant Williams. Grant Williams is my guy. Great guy. So he just got a new chain with his logo. <laughs> On it, yeah, and it looked like the the Warner Brothers logo a little bit, <laughs> and Marcus Smart walks into the locker room, sees his chain. Grant's like, you know, not like parading his chain, right? Yeah, he's like, yeah. look at this new chain, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, guys are asking him about it, right? Mm. So then Marcus walks in, and you know, Marcus has a bunch of chains. Yeah. So he walks in, and he sees Grant's chain, and he starts going in. Like he's like, who, like he's like, what is this chain? Yeah, yeah, this chain ain't this. This chain worth like two dollars. He said, <laughs> right. He was like, he was berating his chain. And then the part that sent me was, <laughs> dude took his chain. He said, man, this is cheap. He said, I could bite through this motherfucker. What? And he bit it. And I was, bro, that I was nah. rolling. The <laughs> 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 disrespect. Bit the man's bro, chain. Bro, he bit the man's chain. Mark is a dog on and off the break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he different. He yeah. different for that, man. Bruh, that shit had okay. me weak. Nah, well, I can't, I can't really funny. think of too much. Nah, that's cool. That's a good one, yeah. man. That's good. Well, if you had any question that we should ask the next guest, what would it be? That was good, Harry. That's a good question. Damn. Don't, don't do that. Yeah. I got it. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> He, he's taking credit for this what, question. What are you doing? Let the man think about a question. Go ahead, bro. You're always trying to do so much. You're going to be biting. Pause. It's not a pause. I don't think that's a that's pause. That's not a pause. You reach. And okay, we, we keeping that one in. I could have reached. Go ahead. Now that uh, was. That was that pause. was a pause. Yeah. What, what did I say? You said we keeping that one in. Y'all both reaching right now. <laughs> well, that was a little bit of a pause. <laughs> All right. Same no, right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, y'all asked some good questions today, though. Yeah. There is definitely one, though. Um, now you, you make up your own question that you want yeah, to ask. I mean, you here. didn't ask the welcome to the league moment. Um, didn't ask. We didn't ask welcome. We said we said welcome to the SEC, college. Yeah, we said yeah, or college. college. Yeah, we said college. Welcome to the yeah. league. Uh, Look, why you on it? What's your welcome well. to the league? Why, why <laughs> you, you might on as it? Well, we got some uh, time. I mean, y'all didn't go ask ahead. me that question. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you might as well go ahead and tell the people. We're, we're asking this person that too, but you go ahead. Nah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's your question. Welcome to the league. Um, this was our. Uh, yeah, I think it was preseason. Yeah, preseason rookie year. We're playing the Nets. Mm-hmm. For, literally first game. Um, I get in. Jeff Green is on the Nets. Mm-hmm. It's a help side situation. Um, I'm on the opposite block. Jeff Green's on the corner, and he doesn't shoot the three. He gets run off the line, so he, he comes to the rim. And I was like, oh, okay, it's my chance. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go ahead and meet him at the rim, make a name for myself Oof. off the rip. You know? I love it. 
I like you that. Get to go like block, confidence. right? Like yeah, it. there you go. Well, that sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> so I jump. He jump. I stop. I stop going up. He, he keep going up. <laughs> And this can't end well. It did not end well. I remember, like, halfway through that, I was like, oh. <laughs> Damn. And I think he did it with two hands, but it was a simple dunk. But I remember that was, like, my first, like, minute into the game. Oh, yeah. man. And I remember I took the ball out so quick, like. <laughs> yeah. I was like, bro, we. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I said, yo, we, 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 we yeah, get yeah, past yeah. this. Like, <laughs> and we are not yeah, talking about this it. later. This no. is not, not a thing. Nah, nah. Mm. But yeah, that was definitely my welcome to the league moment. Quick. Yeah. Nah, nah I appreciate that, man. Yeah. I appreciate John. You, you got, got anything? anything? Nah, I mean, the only thing I would think we could have touched on is, have you spent any time with Jack Harlow? You New Balance, um, you a oh, New we Balance didn't athlete. Talk. That band is a New Balance Have athlete. you spent any time with Mr. Harlow, man? Yeah, I met him. I met him twice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. He cool dude. Solid guy. Yeah. yeah. Solid guy. Like that. That's yeah. awesome. Oh uh, yeah. Shout out New Balance yeah, for him. Yeah. yeah. Shout that's, out New Balance. That's him. Yeah. Well, that's it, brother. Man. Appreciate you. Uh, we appreciate you guys having me, man. Yeah. This is good. good. This was dope, man. Appreciate yes, you, my yes, guy. Sir. Good luck this season, yeah. man. Yeah, hey, Do go check them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aaron Neesmith, man. What's your IG? Uh, Aaron underscore Neesmith. It's simple. Yeah, yeah. Indiana yeah. Pacers, on, watch out. All right. And we out. That's it. Peace. Hey, Boom. like, share, subscribe. You forgot. They going to do that. Y'all going to do that. <laughs> there it is. Bet. We out of here. Done so. Good work, fellas.